My Hero Academia is finally back. It's been more than 13 months since season 6 ended, although I wanted them to take all the time for this season, but it's good to be back, honestly. Now Minakoyama is now the director for season 7, and yes, I am very hyped for all the scenes directed by her. Hopefully it won't be very bland and filled with action cause this season is again an all out war. We had a really solid start with the first episode, we left off with the number one US hero star and stripe coming towards Japan in the last season. This new first episode also features the new opening and ending songs which have some really cool and stunning visuals. Also who are these people who are saying this opening sucks? I mean. Please, firstly you haven't watched MHA after season 3 and you have the audacity to say this opening is bad or TK can only make good openings but since this was MHA it sucks, like it doesn't work that way. This opening is literally perfect. What is bad about it? Not every shonen can become Jujutsu Kaisen you know. We have friends here who try to help each other in tough situations and hope exists even in dark times. Ok maybe I went way too overboard but. I love both MHA and Jujutsu Kaisen. Everything is perfect in this opening. The still frames in the first half, I think those are fine, really fine. As a manga reader, these visuals means a lot and also the second half of this opening has a lot of action sequences which is good. The key animation for Deku swinging around these buildings was done by Akira Iwamoto. He was responsible for the crazy swinging cut in which Yota Ando and his 3D CG team were also the shining stars. The coordination between the 2D and 3D departments was insane. The only part I didn't like about this opening was the end part where Deku and everyone are just standing under the sun looking at the bubbles for about 15 seconds. But it serves more as a way to conclude the first shot of the opening, showing that Deku has now people around him and the bubbles are also referencing to the line set free and burst like a soap bubble which is given in the lyrics of the song and yeah this opening was very good visually like look at this part of toga the transition was so smooth along with the music kind of reminded me of unravel from tokyo ghoul and yeah i just want to say how can you dislike this song it's really good it may not sound good at first but it did grow on me and it's in my head whole day now okay let's break down this episode a lot of new scenes were added in the beginning and some of them were even from later chapters. We left off at chapter 328 and we continue from 329. We see Deku doing his laundry and we had some moments from the last season which was a good reminder that things are still pale in this society and there is despair which can only be ended by ending the fight with villains. We see some guys at an airbase watching the TV and they get to know that the situation in Japan is real bad and we see Star and Stripe out of her costume for the first time and she wants to go to Japan for helping All Might with her bros. We see All for One talking to Spinner that how bad he wants Star and Stripe's quirk to win this war and reach his goal which is a secret apparently. We cut to the top 3 heroes and they get to know that Star and Stripe has met Shigaraki in her way and oh lord this panel finally got animated but like this. I really don't know how do I defend bones here but I guess they just can't replicate Horikoshi's art style. Like in the anime he didn't have that aura and felt kinda goofy. Horikoshi's art style is just so detailed that maybe Bones didn't think of making this scene look very impactful. And regarding Star's character, she's super confident and is ready to go all out. Her saying Mochiron Sumash was really great. Just goes to show how much she has been influenced by All Might. Also, not gonna lie, wherever they showed Star, they kept her design very very consistent cause she didn't look bad in a single shot. Whenever she used her quirk, they used these thick black lines which were used very often in season 2 and 3 but not that much in season 5 and 6. Whereas Shigaraki looked okay in this episode, I mean if we compare it to the manga, Shigaraki looked super frightening and menacing but uh, in the anime he's just kinda giving a plain smile. Whereas some shots are original and look really good, scenes like this which looked kinda gruesome in the manga look very plain in the anime. Like this scene could have definitely looked more painful if they added details to the skin 
Also, the shot where Star punches Shigaraki felt kind of funny. I mean, Shigaraki isn't necessarily weak, but at this point, he's just having an identity crisis. He isn't all for one, he isn't Shigaraki, he isn't Tenko Shimura, but he's about to become an entirely new being. Shigaraki uses any combination of quirks to avoid Star's attacks, and just imagining the new order quirk allows Star to do almost anything is insane. This battle is gonna be crazier even more the next episode, so I think. This episode ended with Shigaraki getting clapped, I mean literally. Star made up this thousand times her size Susano, and every attack she did was glorious. Her fist bump to the earth was fantastic and was done by Takahiro Komori who was the animation director for the last few scenes. The Kirano scene was the highlight of this episode. Using all the lasers, Star pinned down Shigaraki so bad that he fell to the ocean floor. The level of impact was just too crazy if you think about it. Jason Yao did the sequence and it was absolutely amazing. Star fought in all her glory and she plans to destroy Shigaraki completely by using these missiles called Tiamat which are on the way to her right now and the episode ends right here. This episode has received mixed thoughts from people. Overall, the episode started great, but only in the last few minutes it got good. Which I kinda agree upon because Shigaraki had a lot of dialogue in this episode, but the next episode will cover a lot of action and stuff so I'm very sure it will have a high positive feedback. That was it for the episode and I can give this a solid 8.5 out of 10 for a very amazing start. Now let's jump to the ending. The ending song is done by Oma Inotake and it is called Subomi. And I must say this, ever since season 5, every ending has become more and more emotional and gives a competition to the openings. I must say opening 12 and ending 12 are one of the best pairs we have gotten images so far. It starts by showing the villain's past with a very depressing and desaturated color palette which changes after we see someone praying and I know who that is which likely references to the message that someone's prayers can change the future. Then we get to see one is heroes looking back on their past, just like we did with the villains just now, but the difference in color palette is there, and this difference is probably how the heroes ended up on the good path, whereas the villains ended up being the rejects of the society and went on a bad path. And manga readers, Oh my goodness, these shots are straight up heartbreaking. Like, I can't even imagine, how can Bones be so cruel? They nailed it with the song and visuals this time. Probably the best ending for me after ending 1 of season 1. So that was it for the first episode of this brand new season. Let me know in the comments if you liked this episode or hated it. The next episode comes out tomorrow and I know I'm super late, so sorry for that. And from the previews and leaks of what I got to see. This episode will be having a big fight and the animation might go crazy. So I'll take my leave now and I'll see you after the next episode. Sayonara.